So there's been a rumor flying around the interwebs and places that I kind of, you know, stay on regarding Bergheim, my favorite club in the world. And people are alleging the rumor is that it's going to be closed at the end of 2022. Now, to be fair, this is a constant rumor that happens, I think, every other couple of years. When, you know, before the pandemic was just a constant thing people used to always talk about, that it's going to close, it's going to close. And I think people were just kind of spreading the rumor just because, you know, it was fun to piss off and to kind of get people like myself who are fans of Bergheim all in the tizzy. Because I think if you don't really care about the club and then you hear people kind of constantly sort of like wanking over it, talking about how amazing it is, and get selected to go inside and once you're in there it's amazing the toilets the drugs the dark rooms the toilet. i guess if you don't like it and you hear people talk about it often a good way to kind of troll and to get on people's nerves is to kind of just throw out some unfounded rumors and um hope that you can cause a little bit of a disturbance to get people you know snickers in a twist and clearly this has worked um, with a considerable level of success because it's been spread all over the place. People have been getting absolutely frantic and crazy about it. And by the looks of it, it looks like it was a singular rumor started by one person who basically wanted to kind of cause a bit of division. And I think he was kind of answering it sort of like an open, it was a kind of an open ended question, but I guess someone took away the question mark and then it kind of turned into whatever it's turned into. So this is a question of Mixed Max and Bergheim's rumor to be closing by end of 2022. Oh, and also on top of this, the reason why people are getting tizzy too is because this is on the back of the news regarding Oscar booking and obviously Oscar booking is what represents all the resident DJs in-house booking agency of Bergheim so clearly if the booking agency is closing some people would kind of surmise that that means that the whole business is closing but I said in my video regarding Oscar booking that I think this might have to do with them maybe selling Bergheim to other owners to other people maybe selling parts of it because I've read in places, you know, where people know more business than I do, that when you want to sell, you sometimes trim the fat. So you maybe get rid of people in terms of redundancies and firings. And you also maybe get rid of certain teams and kind of, you know, consolidate everything and make it as streamlined as possible. So that when you're presenting it to potential investors, there's not any extra fat that they can kind of, that will maybe put them off on the deal. You can kind of make it like, hey, here's what we do. Here's what we're about. Here's a month. And then go from that way. Anyway, the article says as follows. Bergen is rumored to be closing for good by the end of 20. 22 the famous building institution has been open since 2004 has become the center of speculation following the closure of its in-house record label um, agency called Oscar Tun um, according to the phase magazine the final end of Bergen will come by the end of the year per several inside sources of the club the Bergen is closing forever the final end will come this year one source alleges one of the founders has already been paid out and is said to be staying in the countryside of Bradenburg uh, the others simply don't feel like it anymore and have other life plans in mind which to be honest if you're just going to explore and just kind of entertain the rumor it doesn't sound too far-fetched as i've mentioned before like i was privy or i was lucky enough to go to um the Bergheim when um just before the pandemic so this must have been like february 2020 and i noticed it was obviously really you know quiet compared to other months because obviously people were scared of the pandemic but also it kind of was you know it didn't really feel as busy or as kind of frantic as it did when I went in at 2018 before that so clearly there was a bit of a downturn in it. and since I've been back there which I've come in a couple of times this year I've definitely seen a change in the kind of overall people that go there and from for the one thing you notice is that there's way more quote-unquote locals or regulars people that kind of you know go there all the time and live there but there's not a lot of tourists that would go there like people that would kind of just you know hop on a plane and go there for the, for a techno weekend have maybe decided just to stay at home or they don't want to get on planes anymore or just in general because we were well, we, we, we lived under the flipping clouds of the pandemic for two and a half years some people just have developed other hobbies other interests so just gone to other things so it wouldn't surprise me if maybe an owner or somebody part of the ownership has also had the same sort of mindset maybe they're bored of clubs maybe all that whole time spend twiddling your thumbs you know idle minds you know can wonder and think of other things like i mentioned previous times like that article with one of the owners of um what's that club called in munich things called blitz and he was basically saying hey even though he was happy that clubs were reopening just during the time when the lockdowns or the restrictions were easing he was basically saying um he was still kind of pissed off and upset because he lost some of his best staff members and he said that those people were what made the club what they were and they've now there's no coming back i mean those guys have kind of and gals have basically moved on to other things and developed other hobbies other interests some of them started families in the time of the pandemic like the amount of babies that were born during the pandemic is absolutely crazy also so um i can understand or i can 
I can kind of picture or imagine a scenario where an owner could also be like, you know what, I'm fed up of having to field all these fucking guestless requests and, you know, indulge these flipping ego driven DJs, especially if you're post pandemic and you're still seeing people with the same bad attitude they had prior. You're like, considering everything that's going on in the world, you still think you're the center of attention, all this sort of stuff. So I can get why you can get disillusioned for sure. Um, but it continues says Face Magazine adds that the venue would not uh, be taken over by a single by another nightlife organisation upon its closure in this case there are different concepts for example passing the club onto younger hands or selling it to another operator apparently it's not desirable according to the source Bergham's chapter should finally be closed with no further intent iterations of the club and the venue would not continue to exist as an art location as it did during the pandemic so if it closes it's just going to close which I would prefer to be fair um, much like my um, love for like you know um, old school streetwear brands from like the 90s and early 2000s especially you know um, ones that were founded in like Tokyo or like parts of New York especially when that kind of stuff was popping up and and even brands here in London one of the things I love about that kind of era was that a lot of people a lot of those guys and girls would be anonymous so you wouldn't really know too much about them and about why they started the brand to just be out there they put on these cool parties they do these cool you know uh, flipping activation events around their clothes they they dress some of the coolest people out there and then they just stop it out of the blue no more collections anymore and then they'll start something else and then you'd be able if you were smart and you were kind of clued in you could tell if that was the same person who was designing the brand that you liked before because the little design codes or little things little easter eggs they popped into their clothing and i just like when things just end in general sack same with tv series the worst thing you could do with a tv series is reboot it or give it a prequel because they're never good never ever good with the only example i can think that's kind of good was better call soul but for the most part prequels and sequels and reboots are usually terrible so when you just end things like the wire how it just ended sopranos it just ended mad men it just ended you you just have brilliant tv that just stands alone that can go into the tv hall of fame um same thing goes for engrenage same thing goes for you know that's a german series they've got now called 44 blocks that i'm a fan of um same thing goes for gomorra all these clapping you know amazing shows look at narcos for instance narcos just get going on and on and now it's turned into fucking shit so if bergen does close and it's just done I, I wouldn't be opposed to it because you'd hold on to these amazing memories and then the other clubs around Berlin could also sort of like take that energy and kind of use it to kind of take their clubs to the next level but none of this kind of reinvention sort of thing it continues so this isn't the first time Rubens Bergen closing a circulated music world but after in-house booking agency Oscott Bookings announced its closure last week speculation has risen as to if this really is the end of the uh, Kreuzberg Friedrichstein bordering venue in the 18 year run Oscott Bookings will be the final arm um, of the Bergen's Oscott brand to close with the Oscott Tun record label having closed and shop earlier this year after the release of its imprint anniversary funds in plus one Bergen's first opened under the name Oscott in 1998 Later gutted and redeveloped by the founders Michael Tufel and Norbert Foreman into a techno club in 2004. The world famous club currently has 250 employees and a dozen residents. Wow, dude. I don't know too many, I don't know they employed that many people. That's flipping mad, isn't it? Um, but obviously, this has been proven to be a no, it's proven to be. Let me say from my point of view, I got some inside information from people who I would not name who contacted me privately because of the times, you know, I speak about Berger and flipping suck them off and stuff. I guess they knew that I was a fan of the club and they kind of wanted to set the record straight with me. And I've been told that this is a rumor that's unfounded and it's not rooted in any truth whatsoever. Categorically, I've been told this is not true. I've been told Berger is not closing anytime soon. So this whole idea that it's going to close at the end of the year with no announcement, it's just going to close out of the blue and we're already in what October and we've had nothing it's, it doesn't make any sense so I've been told categorically by people associated or linked or close to the people over there that is categorically not true so if, if you take my word for anything then you can take it if you don't believe me don't believe me if you want to believe it believe it whatever it may be but obviously this rumor was started I believe by this guy here called um, Jürgen Lahmann on Facebook actually who's a pretty prominent person um, within the Berlin you know dance to music scene um, if you're familiar with his name he's also one of the people behind the legendary legendary techno rave magazine uh, called front page um, if anybody has any old um, magazines of this because I've been trying to get a hold of these for ages but you know that I usually miss the auctions on eBay and stuff but if you have any old issues of front page that you want to get rid of please let me know I'll be grateful to kind of take them off of your hands 100% um, I think the funny thing is that 
um, front page and this other magazine called Night were some of my references. Uh, Night magazine were some of my references that I was kind of going for when I first wanted to start my own little fanzine thing or like a vizine in general about nightlife that was going to be called Creeper, which nowadays is probably the worst name considering all the things happening in the dance music scene around, you know, <laughs> um, funny business on the dance floor and funny business in and around the club space with DJs and punters and stuff. So Creeper's probably a bad name, but back in the day, I wanted Creeper because back in the day, you know, I used to wear flipping brothel creepers to the club and shit. So creeping through the night, all that sort of stuff bit of an easy name to pull and one of my references or two of my references that I was kind of pulling from was this iconic magazine from the 70s and 80s called Night that went to pour through right um, that kind of depicted um, New York mainly saw that night, nightlife and you know kind of Studio 54 kind of vibes and then of course on the European tangent you had front page and this sort of like techno rave acid sort of like thing that was going over and over there and these are two more references that I was kind of helming on so if anybody has any old issues of these please let me know I'll take them off your hands but anyway um, Jürgen Lahmann here courtesy of a Facebook translation so as follows finally the weekend the Bergen closes story and the interview in the groove has made quite a way and many friends kind critics and some complete idiots have stepped up again with old known accusations and new charges therefore i want to clarify here as follows the mountain groove no one I admittedly this is again translation so it's pretty difficult to read it and think it makes sense but let's see I, admit, I admittedly posted the closure rumor with the question mark and the closing question does anyone know anything more accurate following this there were a few calls with people who know more and i fixed it all in a few hours so he basically said open-endedly i guess do we think it's closing and then i guess because that article made a stir other people reached out to him catch the club and said no it's not true and then he cleared it up but you know journalists and stuff didn't want to you know update the story because already it was gaining traction it probably got that site more clicks than it's ever got in a while so i get it um, it continues the fact that the phase magazine brings a report and the berlin uh, newspaper um, which referred to the phase magazine is interesting no one talked to me directly build bs called me to whom the fb post was also played um i told him it was misinformation and they waived further reporting so he told them it was not true but they declined to update the issue because i guess they'll get all the clips they wanted two for the groove magazine here are once again well-known highlights in the reaction i have ridiculed the whole youth culture to the cigarette industry the cost of the deal okay it's, i think it's something else yeah, it's not an issue. But essentially, the guy basically says, hey, it's not true. The story is completely made up. I was obviously being a bit of a troll and just trying to, you know, cause a bit of division, cause a bit of, you know, a bit of a ruckus. And then he cleared up immediately when he was kind of pressed on the issue, but they didn't bother to update the story. So clearly there's a bit of a, you know, a, a bit of an agenda there with the stuff going on. But that aside, that aside, that aside, have you guys seen the flipping lineup for today? As you know, as I was speaking for today, um, what is it? The fucking 15th of October. Absolutely insane. I just checked it out. I just quickly scanned it. And the ending of Panorama Bar is absolutely nuts, right? Don't you think so? Um, either, either way, but let's start maybe from Octa Octa to kind of set the mood. You've, you've got Octa Octa playing at 4 p.m. in Panorama Bar on the Sunday. Then you've got Royce and Murphy playing a live set which is going to be sick. I'm not sure if she's going to be just behind the deck singing or if she's going to be standing on some plinths or she's going to be in the middle of the dance floor. I don't know how that works at Panorama Bar when you're performing live. I guess she's going to be behind the decks because that's kind of technically the stage and you have a DJ just playing your set. So I love Royce Murphy. She has some incredibly good um, dance music adjacent tracks and remixes too. Um, and then you've got N... Um, Baumecker, Baumecker, N. Baumecker, sorry, who I'm a big fan of and someone who doesn't get enough of the ratings, I feel like, and he's really nice too. I've spoken to him a couple of times when I've been in Bur Panama Bar, kind of just said, hey, I enjoyed your set and he's kind of really personal. Even though I say you shouldn't speak to DJs, the, the times I've kind of bumped into him and said, hi, I've enjoyed your set, he's always been really pleasant, so I really recommend checking him out. But in, apart from that, he's a really good DJ, um, definitely a Panama favourite and of course, Roy Perez, who I've always been a bit of a fanboy of ever since I saw him play back-to-back -back with DJ um, Dr. Ruby. Rubenstein um, in Colour Factory a while ago when it was called Mixed Garage. But that is a pretty sick um, back to back list of people playing in it, right? Octa Octa, um, Royston Murphy, N. Borkheimer, and then Roy Perez all playing 
from that time all the way till close. And then in the main room, you've got this. You've got Rudd had clothes in Bergheim on that. So if you're over there right now, this is probably one of the best sets that you could ever see, especially if the rumors are going to be true that it's going to be closed, which it isn't going to be closed. But that's a pretty sick lineup, man. Um, so it's pretty hard for me to picture a place that books people of this kind of caliber and has probably queues out of the wazoo is going to suddenly going to be closing. I don't really see that happening. Let's actually check the queue and see what the situation is saying live here on the actual page. Let's go to Bergheim live which is the main account that everyone should be going to if you are going to be checking out for flipping queue updates it's here can you see that there, that one there this account here called burger live if you're not familiar with the account you should get familiar with it the person that runs this is pretty good at updating the instagram story so you can see what's going on as you have updating now or oh, no update regarding it so we can't really see if people are there in the queue yet but i think if i also go on my phone i could probably check it out and maybe show you some evidence that people are actually there and having an absolute whale of a good time let me see if i can get this off from the screen first on my phone and then i can do the flipping location thing because there are people on here who kind of sometimes upload pictures and stare with fucking instagram stories of them at location as you can see you can kind of see it here where the ring on the location when you press it it kind of has a ring around there so you can kind of click the ring location it will show you who's actually there Let's see here. Loads of people, see? Currently outside, hanging, having a good... Yep, it's popping off. People tagging themselves in there. So that's a pretty cool way to kind of see what the vibe is saying. What's this person saying? Uh, NY bar, muscle night, okay, cool. The week ones, people are going there still, as you can see. That's a cheeky video, isn't it? Recording on the inside. Maybe it's an exhibition though, probably. More exhibition pictures and videos. And more people queuing kind of outside. Yeah, the queue's meaty, isn't it? Oof. Longest queue. This is like two hours ago. That was a, that's a pretty meaty queue. Actually, let me make sure I screenshot that because that looks like a nice meaty queue picture for another time for a thumbnail. But yeah, so the final um, story behind that is that it's not closing anytime soon. Don't believe the rumours. It's all fake. Um, I've been told that categorically myself. And of course, the person who spread the rumour himself has been told that it's fake too because people basically set him right. So it's not true. Don't believe the rumours. Don't believe the hype. Go to the place if you want to. Don't go if you don't want to. It maybe it isn't worth the queue if you don't want to go to. And, you know, it is what it is kind of thing. I think the discourse around it is a bit boring, to be honest. I know I started myself and I spoke about it myself, but I think the discourse around it can get a little bit tiring. It's just a club. It's not that big of a deal, really. It's just a bloody club.